shut the fuck up! Here, darling. Why don't you go get yourself something nice? Okay? Oh, thank you. <laughs> is, is this seven dollars? I said something nice, not expensive. You want to be a greedy fucking cow, huh? No. Now get the fuck out of here, all right? You men are all the same. Yeah. What's good? It's your boy, what's good? Was. And um, today's video, you guys. Um, what we're gonna get into is basically pertaining towards a big part of where we left off in the last EP, which is a huge theory based on the inner connections on Trevor, and that he might be connected towards not only the devil, but he might be GTA's answer to their version of the Antichrist and or part of his reenactment in the Judgment Day. Now, I'm going to, throughout the video, show numerous connections that I couldn't necessarily show in my last video due to not only time restraints, but for understanding reasons. I wanted you guys to understand where I was even going with it, which is why I wanted you to understand the first video first for a while before I move on to some of the physical connections that make sense within the research. So, right now we're going to start off with the vanilla unicorn. Okay, and in my previous video I mentioned something very informative about Trevor and how he owns the vanilla unicorn. Okay, and that he basically conquers it. Okay, out of nowhere. Out of most of the characters in the game, he moves the most. He goes to different areas and he just takes charge no matter where he goes. Whether his cousin's friend's house with, you know, with that girl that he murdered him and, and his wife. Or whether he goes to the vanilla, vanilla unicorn or even whether he goes to the lost MC's um, headquarters. He basically goes and he conquers, okay? And that's one thing that's very informative when it comes to Trevor and that I want you to keep in mind. And the main thing that I want you to keep in mind, aside from the fact that we made relevance with the unicorn being something tied to historically what it was originated for, which is a rhino and the rhino tank being relevant in GTA's past, the fact is, is that they've made a point to having the logo, okay, a certain color. And no, it is not gold, as you think, okay? Because gold shines a little brighter. This is a specific color. And I believe personally that it has something to do with the Antichrist. I'm going to bring more reason to why this color is brass, okay? And I'm going to get into not only why this color is brass, but why the Antichrist has a lot of the connections towards Trevor on a physical aspect, but a lot of the a lot of the answers that we've come up with so far are pertaining towards the Rapture, Judgment Day, and all of the above. And also, also why Bry just might be right about his ladder. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about his last video about a ladder that appears only at a certain perspective. Okay. Now, yes, this can be written off as a glitch. I even went to so much lengths as to, as to see if it physically applied to some of the other things in the game to see if it was legit. Because this is something within human nature that we do. We try to make sense of certain things. But I realized that's not the right way to go about it. And I think we have found a little bit of more of a connection, okay, towards certain things, why that might be relevant in the mystery. And one shout out I do want to make very relevant is my boy Herbalist. He's, you know, one of my best friends online right now. He's a cool dude. Um, him, Eilish, Joshi. And, and, and a few other guys, man, that, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm nothing without you guys, and that's what you need to understand. This isn't just me here. Yes, I did, I did inspire to, to, to spark the, the ingenuity in order to, to crack a lot of this code, but it is the community 
that will solve this by coming together, okay? And I'm trying to lead that, that energy into a positive direction. Now, with that understood, I'm going to show you what I mean by brass. Okay, so now we're looking at the times of the genitals again from my previous video. And um, if you didn't see my previous video, I would suggest you watch that first before watching this just so it can make a, a little bit more sense to why I'm even bringing this up. Now, aside from that, before I even show you, you know, just the aspect of brass and, and other things, understand what I mean about certain things, okay? I want you guys to open your mind. The... Tower of Babel, okay, was a stairway to heaven, okay, but it was made by sinners. It was made by sinners, which makes perfect sense why it aligns perfectly with sinner's passage, okay? Not just that, because you can see the ladder at different perspectives, regardless of that fact, but the clearest sight you're going to gain of it is either right before you try to physically grab it, okay, or with a sniper, okay? So understand, these are things that are somewhat to be possibly taken as a glitch, just like I showed and MPX showed with the boat. Now, the Tower of Babel is where the origin of the nations started to start all of this chain reaction. And like I mentioned, that gold, okay, was on the mind of the Antichrist, okay, and it is a signature of his head, right? And then you have silver, alright? Think about it. And then you have brass. But then one thing that's very mirrored, you guys, of brass is what? Bronze. Which can make perfect sense on why we, for some reason, out of all GTAs, we finally get a fucking system where you get gold, silver, or bronze. Okay? Aside from that, realize brass is a big part of the Antichrist, like I said. Okay? And I'm going to show you later on that so is iron, okay? Realize, iron is a big part of his physical body. And what represents the actual coming of the Antichrist, okay? And I don't know if you noticed this in my last video or even cared to make the connection, but it's pretty odd that Trevor wanders around sometimes in a fucking dress and this is one of the earliest depiction of a diagram made for the life and times of the antichrist and what is he wearing a dress and it goes into the sick and perverted nature of the antichrist just like trevor one thing i'm going to drift your mind off to before we go off to the next section though, is I want you to pay attention to the fact that we have most of these animals in the game that have been referenced but not actually seen. Okay, and I'm going to show you. First there's the ram, jack sheep, the door set. Alright? We've seen it numerous times. In references, but not the actual animal. Then there's the goat. Okay? The little horn. If you ever wondered why there's a street called Little Big Horn, that is the duality of, once again, the story of the ram and the goat against each other. And how once the goat took charge a, another mighty horn grew big enough to impel heaven itself to bring the starry host down and trample upon it little 
big horn. Okay? References. The lion. Not only do we have lions as far as the duality, okay, within the game, as far as them being called mountain lions, but it's a mirrored image that they are not actually lions within their genus. They are actually cougars. And I'm going to show you something pretty relevant with not only cougars, but leopards and bears in the game. And seriously, you guys, look at it, okay? Like, yes, the logo on the outside in the front is a little withered, okay? But don't judge that by it being off-white. It's not off-white. It's not vanilla, okay? This is brass because of the fact that Look at the letters, okay? You can clearly see the letters are clearly intact, okay? More of the solid ones are not withered. And you can see in a lot of the billboards around the city that even mentioned the vanilla unicorn, okay, are in brass. If it was gold, if they wanted to make it gold, they could have clearly just done gold. They really could have, you guys. They could have made it a bright gold. They've made a point to make things yellow, gold, and green, like I've proven before. But you have to understand what I mean. This is brass. Okay. So now what I'm looking at right now is the last mission where you play as Franklin and Michael to go kill Trevor. And look at the, some of the, look at some of the things he says to you guys like they're all biblical okay and they have to do with either the ascension of Christ or they have to do with the the basically the false ascension of the of the antichrist okay he calls you a snake all right and i'm going to tell you the relevance to the snake and why it doesn't necessarily mean the fucking antichrist and why you think okay this can mean the devil it's in duality of possibly the devil and something else that I'm going to show you. But before then, I want you to understand. See, he says, I'll come back and gut you. How would you come back? Think about it. Okay. <laughs> I will hunt you down. He's talking about coming back. I fell for the lies again. The devil feels betrayed by God because of certain smaller aspects of why he wants to be a new God. And that's one thing he's kind of trying to do is, is, you know, he's trying to make God seem like he's a liar. That's what the devil does. And this is what Trevor is doing. He's making... The father seemed like he is something unholy, like he is something of man, just like he is. But they are different, although from the same tree. I mean, really think about it, you guys. This shit is all biblical. I mean, look at what Trevor says. You fucking Judas. You're just like him. Okay? Think about it. This could be taken in the wrong duality. You could think, okay, you're doing the wrong thing, but that's what the devil wants you to believe. He wants you to, he wants you to believe that, that Jesus is doing something wrong, that Jesus isn't right, all of that, okay? So he's going to make Jesus seem like he is not of God and that he is just like Judas, a sinner and no different, okay? It's real, it's, it's real tied, you guys. But like I said, I'm going to bring a lot more reason to why we should have paid attention to leopards, bears, and a few other things. So now you guys, now we're looking at leopards, okay? And there's something very keen about leopards, aside from the fact that they are in duality of one of the beasts that was in contrast to the Antichrist. Okay, now understand this. The leopard, okay, is one of the five big cats in the genus Panther. Okay, now, Panther is Panthers, okay? Just for, you know, and I'm not saying that, you know, you guys are stupid or anything. I want you to understand that this has a lot to do 
with certain aspects of not only leopards or panthers, okay, but an ethic to Serbia and a lot of the things that I've brought up were tied to folklores within West Asia and so on. The fact of the matter is, is that most of these things are, once again, tied within duality. But there are key things that tie these things together. The leopard, okay, is something tied to GTA. And they have been throwing it in our face for a while. And I need you to understand, not only have we made references with Pyrrhus being a mirrored image of a hawk, okay, and a eagle, and all of the duality of the birds that we have looked up so far. It applies when it comes to the big cats, okay, and the beasts that they are referencing here, okay, and it does have a, a very significant reference, okay, within wordplay and within dualities, okay, that tie the past GTA and this GTA together, okay. Now, like I said, keep panthers, all right, in mind and the genus within Serbia. And before I do show you what is relevant, okay, within leopards, I want you to take a look at this. And I want you to realize there's been a big reason why in most of my videos I mention Russian things, whether Serbian or, you know, Soviet, they are tied to Russia. And I've mentioned several times that this is tying in a lot of possibilities of different folklores and religions, okay? And if you haven't noticed so far, this is, uh, I'm sorry you guys, but this is what they based the mystery on, all right? Along with everything that I've shown you. So for those of you who think, you know, that, that researching thing is not going to find anything, you need to rethink your thought. I'm going to run down the list for a second. Not only do we have crescent moons and moons relevant within the game, but we have stars, we have deities, we have a will of characters, okay, that all fall within unison, okay? We have stars, we have... All of these things are tied, okay? But one thing that you need to understand are the key things. The aspect of the sun... It's tied to God and religious aspects of the game, okay, spirituality, and all of the above, okay, seeing the rainbow, just like I mentioned, okay, Michael sees the rainbow constantly within glare of the sun, he always sees the rainbow, the lake that comes from the tree, you guys, the boat that carries them. It's all about perspective and how you look at things in life. And yes, this shit is bigger and deeper than just GTA. The aspect of the devil I want to make something very known here. He is holding a curved cane. This can be in reference of the same curved cane that he has. Okay, dualities. You have to understand one can mean the other and so on and so forth. But it's all about how you look at it. If you are in the evil spectrum of the game, you just might be closer to obtaining some of the more physical items that you have been searching for for a year and a half. And if you believe in the spiritual, it just might unlock a sequence of, a sequence of events, you guys, that are tied to all of them within a trinity, okay? All of these things are tied. 
Notice how they have arrows within this diagram. If you haven't noticed, on the crest of the IIA, okay, and I mentioned and I showed this in my first video, they had arrows pointing downward, literal arrows. And you can see it for yourself. I'm not going to dwell on that too much, but I think you need to understand what I mean about this. Notice how the lightning bolts are wielded from the deity, Michael, the father. Okay? It's all tied. But we have to understand the sequence first in order to unlock possibly all of it or possibly, just possibly, choosing what you're trying to unlock. But, like I said, the dark horse and a lot of other dualities that form within this game, form within all of the aspects that are tied into Serbian shamanism. Okay. Serbian shamanism is something very closely tied with not only GTA, but just the fact that this whole mystery is tying to things about life, okay? This shit and this mystery is deeper than just GTA. But we need to not lose ourselves with the things that can go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. We need to tie in the key words, okay? Yes, the information is very, very important. But we need to know where things are connecting rather than things that are not, okay? And that are just feeding too much information. It's the things that are bringing more information to the same light. Just like all of the other religions we've looked up, this one bases it off of all modern religions and, and sciences and mysticisms, okay? I want you guys to realize this shit, okay? And I know it feels like I'm just being redundant, but I'm going to show you why Serbian shamanism is tied. This is not only going to give us formidable clues about all three of them, okay? But this is going to give us clues about something that we've been missing about Trevor, okay? That is the whole point of, of, of EP6. You guys need to understand that this is about <laughs> the brain. We need to understand that this, not only is this man the Antichrist, but he's tied to certain aspects of the game that are physically in the game, but I want you, before I even show you this, and that's why I'm hesitant, before I show you certain aspects of the physical things in the game that connect to this shit, before I show you that, that does not mean go off and try it yourself, because we don't know when and where to, and how to do it just yet. We just know that they do connect, once again, for some reason. But I'm going to leave that up to you to determine if it's truth or not. Understand that these spirits are tied to shamanism, okay? And they tell you different aspects, different, different animals throughout the world have different definitions of what they represent, okay? And I'm going to bring up a lot of aspects to you right now just with things that tie in with Michael and then I'm going to bring in aspects that tie in with Franklin then I'm going to show you aspects of all of them and then I'm going to show you aspects of Trevor and why it ties to evil things darkness and the aspects of the spirit Okay, so now we're looking at the Ultras Cult script, okay? And uh, one thing I want to mention before I do show a big relevance to the shamanism and, and a big, big, big reference to all of the animals that are referenced in the game and 
their ties to the characters, okay? And it's, it's tied into duality of the mystery, the game, the game's folklore, okay? Wordplay and, all right, and Freemasonry symbolism, all right? One green. Man is a nocturnal animal by nature. By nature. Now, if we apply the fact that green and nature have correlations with each other, we can understand that they are making a correlation here, okay, with it being an animal, all right? And what do we know that pertains to with nocturnal and man, all right, and the mystery as far as epsilon and seeing are pertained to and it is the crest of Los Santos the seeing right but understand there are key things here aside from the obvious aspects of the game okay like Bigfoot and I and I really believe Bigfoot and Epsilon here were the biggest clues we were supposed to make to focus on this fucking crest here, okay? But I want you to focus on a nocturnal animal. The owl, okay? Understand, the owl is pertaining to a certain aspect, okay? But the certain aspect is tied with all of them. And this is just a brief, okay? A brief idea of what I mean toward things that tie the characters together, but there are animals and symbolisms that separate them so that you can figure out new things as far as their path are concerned and possibly the things you are supposed to do. But also, focus on the little things like the beaver. Not only is it a Freemasonry symbolism, okay, but understand that it pertains to the Freemasonry symbolism of the rose, okay? They're all in dualities of the symbolism within the Illuminati, okay? But they're tied within things that are in the game, and that is what I'm going to show you. But like I said, remember, you are not inclined to believe anything that I am telling you, no different than a religion, okay? But if I show you something, it is your choice to deny or believe. Okay, and this is the rosy cross. And I want you to understand what I mean about this, okay? Like, it's, it's, it's pretty much due to interpretation that if you believe, you know, it believes in the devil or not, it's satanic or not. But the fact of the matter is, is that it, this is something that has to do with the physical body, okay, and those are teachings of Satanism. Now, I'm not judging this as being something tied to Satanism, but it has the characteristics of such, and it's just very interesting that, you know, basically they have these references in the game along with all the other things that are mysterious, you know, and why it kind of makes since why, you know, they have something tied to a cross on Trevor, even though they have a lot of evil references to him, because, like I said, there are dualities with something that seems to be good, but it may just be representing evil, okay? Now, I want you to understand what I mean, too, because not only do they have the pentagram and all the other things, but they also have, I don't know if you can see, but... It's also the aspect of a bird, okay? There's a bird, and then there seems to be the same exact lines that they portrayed when they showed the dinosaur and the, and the fruit trees and where it lies. It seems to be the same symbol, and it can be... Interpreted as possibly a lake or what the Masons interpreted as, you know. But that's that could be here nor there. They also have 
representations of things that are in the zodiac and also the colors that we have been referencing these this whole time and one thing that I want to bring into light is that before you start thinking okay well dude this can just be something tied towards you know Christian aspects it's not it's not like you know it has to be just about Christian things well the fact of the matter is is that they suggest that the Rosie Cross you know predates Christianity okay so I, I just I, I want you to understand that certain aspects of these these things and the clues that we're finding are leading us toward the other things that are just showing more proof okay like I don't I don't mean to circle you know back to what I'm saying but I need you to understand why I'm being repetitive in what I'm saying and the certain aspects that show that this man Trevor just might be the Antichrist and point blank a big part of what I think Michael's Easter egg is panning out to is something that has to do with Judgment Day and the Holy Trinity and it makes perfect sense why an abduction has to do with the rapture and the entire grand scheme of what I mean okay and then it says where the cross represents the human body okay that's what the cross really represents and the rose represents the individual's unfolding consciousness okay the Rosicrucian fellowship now I want you to understand what I mean about the unfolding of consciousness this can mean in its own duality one unfolding from consciousness which can mean dying losing consciousness or being reborn and when you bloom you're unfolding okay just like a flower these can be interpreted in in, in different ways but but in one duality they really kind of mean the same thing and that is birth okay whether reborn in another realm be it the spiritual or reborn in reincarnation or any of these things it's all dealing with once again how they are all tied to a certain aspect of an egg okay but that does not limit the egg from meaning several different things and how to read each of their Easter egg okay now I'm going to show you one sure reason that crosses and roses are tied to this man Trevor okay and now we're looking at Michael and um, this is right before I show you guys once again the duality of shamanism and the spirit animals and why they all connect now this is the moment in which it just might get confusing to a lot of you people understand something this game once again bases itself on dualities okay many possibilities from one possibility so whereas you think okay Michael can be looking like a false god or false idol most of the things in the game are considered somewhat false but that's a duality of what we believe to be real or what not okay understand if we take something serious then it needs to be taken serious whether evil or good okay now in Michael's case a lot of the symbolism throughout the game okay the game has given us word to understand that the eagle okay the eagle is what is tied to the lake and the Pyrrhus bird is all within duality and mimicry of the bird that is basically brought forth from the enlightenment okay now understand something though okay just because a bird represents this enlightenment does not mean the bird doesn't represent other things within duality like a physical duality okay so now we're going to talk a little bit about the physical physically in the game 
we're going to pertain the bird aspect to something that we know to be pertained with flight and of importance, which is Trevor. Okay, we know him to be an ex Air Force pilot. Okay, and tied to things of flight. Okay, we know this. This is an apparent thing. I'm not stating this is new information. We all know that. Okay, so that being said, we're going to take that physical duality. Another physical duality is the aspect of the snake. Okay, the snake. Let's get a little physical. Basically, Trevor, throughout the game, once again mentions Michael to be a snake, which makes perfect sense on not only why in the background they have the hawk, okay, pinning the snake between its beak in the background picture, but they also have the option for you to get it as Michael on his chest, okay? Now, this was, once again, a clue for us to understand a bit of the story, but just understanding it's skin deep is going to lead us to confusion, okay? It's going to lead us to think, okay, well, Michael's the evil one. But this is, once again, a game that bases itself on dualities and backwards symbolism, all right? The snake in this game, all right, is not like the snake in... in Reality, whereas we think it's just completely tied to the Antichrist. Okay, so now we're looking at the representation, okay, you guys, once again, of the snake and the serpent, okay? But understand, within shamanism, all right, it takes on different forms of meaning, okay? Meaning a duality of its own meaning, all right? There are representations in the world for a snake to be evil and all that crazy physical fucked up shit that you know it to be like like a representation of the antichrist and, and all of that but then it also can take on a righteous very godly form okay and this form represents a lot of the things that are tied to michael like the messenger of the rainbow okay the messenger of the rainbow serpent think about it elusiveness Michael was not caught in almost every single situation in the game Michael wasn't caught <laughs> I mean he kept making deals with with the FIB and whatnot but it's so he couldn't be caught he was elusive think about it manipulates lightning you guys <laughs> look at the shamanism the father Lightning under his throne. Lightning. There's a reason they're pointing you towards Michael being the snake. Transmutation. Changing. Okay. Exploring the mysteries of life. Primitive or elemental energy. Okay. Primitive. Caveman's. Darwinism. Monkeys. Protection from religious persecution. Think about it. Goddess energy, okay? When they speak of goddess in shamanism, more than often they are talking about mother nature, okay? Nature, dualities, evil, good, and vice versa. Creative power, immortality. When you are meeting Chris Fromage for the first time, and he, and he ascends down to you. He descends down to you. Think about it. What is he teaching you about? Passive mode. Immortality. You can't die. Connection to or forms the magic cord by which the shaman travels through the soul world. Okay? Meditation. Traveling through different realms of reality. It's all based on the spirit of this animal. And we will get into more aspects of this as we progress. Okay, the serpent, alright, does within its own, its own duality mean, okay, the lizard and everything. But the lizard is what is more tied to... Things of darkness and, and the transformation of the beasts and other things of that nature. 
whether the dragon and other things that can be pertained toward the dragon, okay? Like, once again, I've made clear that skulls are tied to death, all right? And Trevor can get pretty much the most skull tattoos than anyone, and the skull is tied to death, just like the raven, and just like a lot of other things that Trevor's tied to, okay? Now, one thing I'm going to point out here is that about the rose. Once again, in duality, the rose can mean a bad thing, meaning death, okay? Or it can mean a good thing, meaning rebirth, like the rebirth of love between Michael and Amanda, okay? Symbolism. But that does not mean go out and get this tattoo and that's going to lead to something. This is a clue. Okay, we don't know just yet if tattoos are the key or any of that. We just know that they are giving us information. Okay, one thing that is one surefire thing. <laughs> Look at this, you guys. They have the Trinity knot. I mean, we should have known this from the beginning. <laughs> Once again, the Holy Trinity. <laughs> and um, even the fact that out of all these numbers, it's a mirrored nine. All right. Flip it around, get six. Okay, now aside from that, I want you to understand certain things about not just the game, but the game's symbolisms, alright? They mention a lot of animals and shit like that in the background, and, and it's to kind of give you leeway to believe in certain aspects of the game, okay? We can believe them just as skin deep as we want to, or we can believe that they have a lot of correlation with each other, like the fact that they show the dragon, okay, the dragon, and understand there's a difference between the correlation between the snake and the dinosaur and what not being tied to birds and everything else that we've come with for the good spectrum of the game, okay, the bad spectrum of the game is what ties in duality of the serpent, all right, and the and the 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 winged lizard, and all of these things that can tie into the bad side of the game that we can, and and I don't mean just the physical things that don't react, but I mean the bad side of Trevor's Easter egg. Okay, one thing that's in common with a lot of these different these different dragons, okay, is the inversion. All right, understand something. There is something in common with these three bird, these three dragons in particular. Okay, and there's the purple. All right, when you invert green, you get purple. Inversion. All right, the rose. Okay, and then you figure that they have this very slight devil poster. With, with basically, dude, the Antichrist, <laughs> and he's holding a rod, alright, I'm gonna get to this rod a little later, but focus on the color, okay, you invert it, what do you get, a nocturnal animal, green, okay, inversion, understand it, you have to use it as a tool, alright, now, I'm going to show you a little bit of why Trevor's side of the tattoos make a little sense. You guys, when you invert certain things, you see certain truths. Okay? Look, the green. That's nature. Notice how he has the feet of an eagle. But once again, this is not the epsilon eagle. This is not the Epsilon eagle. This is a false eagle. Alright? The false prophet, the devil. Point blank. <laughs> Look. When you invert the truth, you get the truth. It's all there, you guys. They put it in front of our face. And now we're looking at, <laughs> like I said, the rose, okay, this is one of Trevor's tattoos, and notice how they have the eye right above it, and the skull 
right in the middle of it. There's even a death skull right next to it, flying. Okay? It's an evil one, too. I think you guys need to understand the fact that these roses are not just bullshit, you know? Yeah, that could have been just taken as, okay, well, dude, they, you know, they do roses all the time, but, I mean, this this isn't the only rose that they put. They, they I mean, they have a fucking tattoo. Seriously, you guys, look. They have a tattoo called The Wages of Sin. Okay? The Wages of Sin. Or Death. Alright? Now, I want you to understand. They want you to pay attention to sin, death, and all these things. Look at his fucking zodiac. They have the Zodiac Skull. I mean, how blatant can you get, you guys? This man is the devil. Period. He is the fucking devil. You have to understand. It's, there, there's, Look. They even have mortos here. It means death. All the shit. Indian Ram. Death. The Baphomet. All that shit. He's... Look. The Grim Reaper and the Serpent Skull. I mean, seriously, you guys. What the fuck? Um, this is concluding the last part of just this part, okay? Just part one of 6.5, okay? You guys need to understand this is going to take a process because I'm trying to fit, literally, you guys, two weeks worth of research into... Like, I tried to fit it into one video. Didn't work, okay? This shit is going to take a while. And unless you want 23 minute long videos, then you need to just have faith in me and trust in, in my documentaries because they're going to bring some clarity to the mystery and what we're trying to do. Now, I want to bring context to a lot of the things that I brought up in the past before I go. Like... The reference in episode 6 that I mentioned about the starry host being impelled by the horn of the little horn and being brought down and trampled upon, okay? Understand, when we rearrange and segregated, okay, Jack Sheep servicing trimanifold R108, we got King James Version. Now, when we follow these tools that we have applied, it gives us some clarity to something physical in the game, but also something pointing us into the right direction because it's pointing us to stars and keywords like wax. The King James Bible version is, the, is one of the only versions of this part of the book that mentions it in any other way. Okay, And it waxed great even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped okay, upon them. Think about it, you guys. Wax. Okay. To be taken into euphemism of something fake. A wax museum and or a wax heaven okay a false heaven also to be taken into the duality of a candle illumination when you apply it you get things that are in the game like wax heaven and the stars the symbolism is all in the game but you have to connect the right things, okay? Like I said, this is just part one of 6.5. Part two is coming tomorrow evening. And it will most likely bring a lot of physical clarities to certain things. But that doesn't mean I'm done. Because there just might be a part three. And the reason why these episodes in particular are the longest is because particularly Trevor 
is someone that we have misguidedly understood the most because he fits too perfectly with the destructive nature of the game. So we have always had fun with him, okay, pure fun, but we've never taken to the duality of certain things he must do. I'm trying to approach this with diligence so that we can understand certain things. I hope you're not disappointed with just watching a long video even though you did claim even though though you gained some clarity and knowledge towards the mystery, okay? I want you to understand that this shit will come all of the things that we want, okay? It will it will come just as random as we understand all of this knowledge. But it takes time. Don't judge me off of the few days that it takes me to actually understand the game. Because you want a rushed theory. It's not about rushing. And I don't believe in giving you guys rushed material. Okay, You can call it far-fetched as much as you want. But understand, I'm showing you things that are not only in the game. But GTA's past and real fucking life. Okay, so before I really do go, you guys, and I bring out part two, I want you guys to understand the gist of what I'm saying, okay? This mystery is tying in almost every single religion, but there are key things that tie in the grand scheme, okay? The grand scheme of things that are going on in the mystery, all right? Understand certain things, but understand that there are dualities of that certain thing, whereas in the Epsilon tract, it tells you about you believing in a lizard with wings okay this can take on two different dualities within a positive outlook on spirituality and things that are in the game and bullshit as far as physical things that don't mean anything that you wouldn't believe in but when you're on that positive side you understand that you open up two dualities one being good and one being evil michael and trevor okay understand within science religion and all the things that have been foretold okay that have to do with god and happiness has been tied to things of evolution which is why we understood the purpose of them using lizard with wings okay they didn't need to say dinosaurs because lizard is a generalization okay it can mean many things many different types of lizards so understand there's a reason they use that wordplay when they say a winged lizard they're not just talking about a dinosaur becoming a bird within bird of prey and evolution that's one duality that's the good spectrum of the duality the evil spectrum of the duality is a dragon Satan okay this is the aspect of most Catholic tradition, okay? And a lot of the animals that coincide with them. And no, this isn't necessarily tied to shamanism, okay? But in certain dualities, not only is it tied to shamanism, but, okay, but when it comes to evil spectrums of the game, you can find out a lot more information on Trevor's side of his Easter egg. When it comes to the good spectrum, you can figure out a lot of things when it comes to Michael's Easter egg, okay? They're tied in one duality, but it depends on which way you look at them, okay? Just like the beginning of this video, there's a reason, once again, why I do things. And I do it so you guys can pick up on certain aspects. Understand that seven doves are used to represent the seven spirits of God and or the Holy Spirit in its sevenfold gifts of grace. Okay? This refers to the prophecy. Now, 
understand this duality okay within catholic tradition follows a lot of the dualities of trevor's physicalities you know the the things that give you symbolism through things but they basically only lead you in a certain path this aspect pertains to certain aspects of the game but within trevor's path now understand once again the seven doves when we apply it to things in the game like the epsilon tract and you can look this up the epsilon tract mentions the dove is also the dove of love and it is the dove of money money you guys think about it in the beginning of this video I played what Trevor giving Denise okay seven dollars and then she gets greedy okay Trevor calls her out on her sin for being greedy alright don't be a greedy fucking cow cows are a huge symbolism within physicalities okay but only within the spiritual side of physicalities like a false idol a greedy cow a golden cow think about it the dove of purity innocence peace <laughs> once again in time of the flood when Noah sent out okay the last time the dove from the ark it's all tied within all of this okay <laughs> the reason why we have chop in the game dog fidelity loyalty watchfulness when you sign up for <laughs> the children of the mountain okay with Franklin one of the main first words within those jumble of words that you are creating is orthodoxy period like I said you guys we are getting closer but consider this just a preview for part two there's a lot more connections coming soon and I need you guys to bear with me on the length okay because once again you see that this apparently takes a lot longer to connect okay and also understand within a grand audience if I was explaining it to one person it would be a lot easier but for me to connect it to certain things so people can understand what I even am understanding here it takes a little longer than you would think so just give me some time you guys but it will come all right slowly but surely once again we are getting closer spread the truth